Well, we're back in Feralis, so I think last episode I ended in Orgrimmar and said I was going to head back here. So I got to the Camp Mohachi Inn, got some rested experience, buffed up, and Panda Cub is... Where's Panda Cub at? Oh, there he is. Probably fell asleep. So Panda Cub's with us once more. We have a return to Witch Dr. Uzeri quest to turn in. I think he's over here. There he is. And then we're going to... See what other quests are still available? I don't actually see many. When I was running into town, I thought I'd see some, but I wonder if we out-leveled all the quests. Um, Alright, we got his herb pouch, or Nero's herb pouch. Uh, he's gonna prepare the Moisic, Moisic vessel. It's a little loud for me, I'm turning up headphones. Alright, oh, wait, wait, what's going on? He begins the ritual. That's a sick dance. That was cool. Alright, so he danced a little bit. The vessels are now ready. Natural materials bring logs, encrusted materials, resilient sinew, and metallic fragments. Oh, I remember this quest. So we actually need to kill a bunch of different mobs in Feralis to get all these things. It's probably a good quest for us. What level is it? It's yellow. Okay, I'm testing the vessel. Go to the hinterlands. Locate the wildkin. Kill ten. Shrink and capture the fallen wildkin. Okay. It's another hinterlands quest. Well, we've got some elite quests up there. Maybe we can try and stack those together. Um, but let's try and see if we can find another oh, quest. Okay, some more quests here. Greetings. Ten thick yeti hides. Okay. May the eternal I appreciate shine. kill quests like that. And is there anything else in here? I wonder if that's about it. I know there's more quests, but I think we may just have out-leveled them. Uh, let me check my mail real quick. I think I'm gonna... Hold on. Security access delta. Oh, whoops. I... Okay, okay. Um... So I paid for this from my buddy. My guildie sent me this for free. I sent him like 50 gold. It's about right for it, I think. And I... Um, oh, something else. Remember that hammer of the... Is it Hammer of the Northern Wind? It's a one-handed mace. It's epic. Find and equip world drop. Level 49 to equip. Um, and I was talking about at level 49. I was like, oh, we could use this now for like a one-handed tanking weapon. Well, I ended up... It's still in my bank here. I sent it back to a bank just to hold it because it, it shipped back because the mail it sat there for 30 days. And what ended up happening is... Um, I realized when I bought it, I spent like 15 gold on it. 15 to 20, and then I put Fiery Weapon Enchant on it, like another 5 gold, so like 25 gold invested in it. Well, it has a chance on hit to proc a Frost Bolt, and you need that Frost Bolt for, you need Frost Damage for Viscidus, a boss in AQ40. Um, he's immune to everything except for Frost Damage in one of his phases, and because of that, I guess the price has gone up. So I looked at the auction house yesterday, and now it's up to 200 gold for one of those. So now I'm like, well... I might hold on to that and see that what happens with the price in the auction house. If it goes up or stays the same or goes down, if I can sell it for like 200 plus gold, I might do that. Honestly, I'd rather just sell it, profit, you know, 170 gold, and then uh, after the auction house fees and everything, and then just send that gold to this guy and just get him that much closer to an epic mount. It just seems a little bit silly. I will check on this letter in a little bit. It just seems a little bit silly to uh, use it for something I'm not going to use that much anyway when I can make a a fair amount of gold from it. <laughs> Gorduni Cobalt. That might be actually kind of near these natural this quest. The uh, metallic fragments. It might be near that. <laughs> I see another quest over there. We should ding really quickly today. Thankfully it's kind of nice. It's a pretty short experience bar there to hit level 50, right? Yeah. Strike. Uh, bring 10 iridescent spray darter wings, okay. Down. Oh, quest log's full. Uh, do we want to drop anything? Oh, man, I meant to go to R uh, Ratchet for this quest. Dang it, I flew right over there and forgot about it. I'm going to get rid of this Martek, the exiled quest. We haven't done it in a long time. We're, we're out-leveled Badlands anyway at this point. Iridescent spray darters, okay. I meant to go to Ratchet on the way down here, and I forgot to do that. Um, I think it's a quest that might continue in in, in Feralis, so that was a bit of a mistake. That's okay. 
Uh, let's go ahead and just learn this now. I've committed to not, um, schematic scapers, the sniper scope is like plus seven damage to ranged weapons. Pretty nice, actually. Um, but, yeah, I think I've committed to, um, let's do this. I think I've committed to stick in a gnomish engineering and not deal with re-leveling up goblin. Alright, what do I want to start with? Um, north of here. I'd give him a shovel. Go to the Gorduni out outpost north of here. Dig up some Gorduni cobalt. Okay, I think I know where that is. Um, I don't remember which side of the river it's on, but I think it might be directly on the west side, directly north. So we'll start with that. And then a new cloak sheen. Those, these spray charters are to the west. We can do that. Uh, a yetis are to the west. Testing the vessel. Um, oh yeah, this is in Hinterlands, of course. Okay, I'm going to go to Hippogriffs and Feralis. Metallic fragments come from any of these mobs. Fairy dragons for the... Okay. Splintered logs. Oh, the trees. Okay, those trees just kind of roam around here. I know we killed one, I think, a couple episodes back. Um, I know... Huh, I might need to go east from here. I don't remember exactly where the ogre compound is. I want to check over here. Scrim totem. Okay, I think... I need to go to the east to get to the ogres. What level are these mobs? 42? Okay. We should be able to run through them. Yeah. Pretty low level. I'm looking out for any treasure chests. If I happen to spot any, but none yet. Um, so we're going to find the ogres. I thought they were here, but... Oh, there they are. That, that looks right. There's like a path over there that totally fits my memory. That's a rebuff. So we're seven minutes into the episode and we've done... <laughs> Basically nothing. Hey look, it's a hunter bot. Guaranteed. Ungilded hunter. Too bad we can't kill him because she is a horde. Yeah, there's our little ogre friends. And we need the shovel. Let's just put the shovel here. Should be like little blue glowing things on the ground. That'll tell us when, where to dig, I think. I've been playing my... Um, I have a low level warlock that I play because I'm trying to level up to 20 just, just like a couple weeks ago I decided I wanted to get a summoner. Um, so I'm leveling to 20 so we can use him from our guild to summon for like world buffs or random things. Um, I So I've been playing my warlock a lot and there's this, this is a little glowy thing. It's not really that bright, it's a little tiny blue glow right there. Um, this should be a melee mob, right? Yeah. All right, shrink ray go. Oh, nope, not what we wanted. All right, we'll do some berserking then. And these guys are pretty low level. We're barely getting experience from them, to be honest. Uh, let's dig here. <laughs> what the heck just happened? Does it not necessarily... Maybe you can't always get it. I, I haven't done this quest in a long time. I didn't do this on my druid at all. Um, let's interrupt this guy's spell cast. Next one will interrupt. A little earth shock action. Um, Pan Cub moved up and immediately fell asleep. Alright. Well, at least these guys give us uh, some mage weave, which is nice. I think we can stay outside. I don't think we have to go into this cave system to get the cobalt. So we'll kind of just move back this way. Um, but yeah, so I've been playing a warlock, which is kind of fun. He's an, he's an orc warlock. Um, I named him Karus, K-A-R-U-S. So I actually reserved that name when the server went live, or before the server went live. That's the name of the... this the, In Orgrimmar, there's a bank, and there's three bankers inside there, NPCs you can talk to. Um, where, like, is this quest bugged, or is it just a low drop? Oh, there it is. Okay. I'm dumb. I need to loot the thing after I click it. I got it. I wonder if I can go back and loot those other two still, if they're still up. Let's go check. I was not paying enough attention. I totally forgot about how this quest works. Oh, hey, we got a loincloth. That's funny. 
Um, well, I think I see it there. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And it looks like the first looks like they respawned already. Are they that's a really fast respawn. Gorduni Dirt Mound. Okay. Well, I'm glad they didn't despawn on us. A chewed bone. Okay. So the drop rate's maybe 50%? Hard to say. Um, but okay, so basically we dig and then we right-click the little dirt mound and tipped ogre teeth. These are kind of cool things. I bet they're not worth really anything, but they're kind of fun. Um, fast to respawn on those two. Like, I guess it's the third one we didn't click yet. It's like, man, that one's already back too. No, we just hadn't clicked it yet. Um, you know what's funny? So I recently, while we were digging up dirt mounds and killing easy ogres, um, about once every year or two, I get this urge to just read a lot of books. Like I read occasionally. I'm not, I read a lot of papers for my job anyway, like a lot of scientific papers. So I kind of get a lot of my reading, like, you know, non-fictional, hopefully, <laughs> reading done. Um, but I do a lot of reading anyway for my job. Like I'm, I'm reading, every day I'm reading papers um, or reading articles from other people, like, just like, I don't know how to describe it, it's so, published papers, or manuscripts from people that are in progress, or notebooks of people in my lab, or that used to be in my lab, to see how they did certain things, like, I'm reading a lot of materials, and I find that I don't, in my free time, enjoy reading as much because of that, I think, um, but every now and then I just get this urge to read a lot of books, so, um, I recently read I've had this book for a while, and I read most of it a while back, but I finally completely read it recently, uh, is The Wow Diary by John Statz. I would say his name is, I think it's Statz, S-T-A-A-T-S. And um, I read that. It's got a 300-page book on the development of the world of Warcraft from, uh, I guess, I think it was an, he would call himself an exterior 3D level designer. Um, so it's a really cool book, The WoW Diary. I recommend it. If you really like WoW, if you're a big fan of WoW, and you're interested in some learning a little bit about interpersonal team relationships on a, on a dev team, I think it's a pretty cool book. I haven't read anything else like it before, but I've never tried to read anything else like it before. Oh, these stupid uh, multi-box mages are out here. No offense to them, but I saw them earlier running through Camp Mohachi. Oh, you know, I take it back. They're nice. the best I can do. Wait, wait, one of them's a priest? That's interesting. <laughs> I'm like, these stupid mages, and they immediately buff me, and I'm like, oh, I feel bad now. <laughs> They're actually very nice people. <laughs> I, I actually, um, I've said this before, I don't really have a problem with multi-boxing for the most part. It kind of stinks if you face them in PvP, but, um, I was mostly like, oh man, this guy's gonna farm up everything, and I was kind of sad about that, but it seems okay. Um, Nice guy. Nice people, whoever they are. Person. I don't know. Um, so, we got Fortitude, 30, 320 health, and uh, more than that in mana. So what is that? So 15 mana per 22, so that's 220 plus uh, 110, so 330, 330. So almost the same amount as the fort in terms of what we get. We also get a higher chance to increase weapon skill, which is probably the best thing for us because our weapon skill is still... For, is it two-handed mace? Yeah, our weapon skill is still... That's four from max. It's almost maxed out. Alright, we're halfway done with the cobalt. We've gotten probably worse than a half drop rate. It's probably like one every three or so. That's not awful. One every two to three. Yeah, not too bad. This guy's gonna kill everything before we... Uh... Oh, it's multiple priests. Interesting. I guess it doesn't really matter if they kill everything, because we don't need to kill the mob, so it's not the worst thing ever. Um, just clearing out the space for us to get our quest done faster, but I kind of like killing those mobs, they're easy. So anyway, I've been reading more in my free time for fun, and I read The WoW Diary, really liked that, I would recommend it. I don't, um, to be honest, well after, so I interviewed John on our on my YouTube channel here, and it's like a three hour interview if you're interested in it. Um, it was a while back, and uh, it's basically a, like an a audio, and then, but I did put in the video itself, I think I put a link to like an MP3 you can download in the description if you don't want to watch the video. The video itself, I put a lot of visual things to kind of show some of the stuff we're talking about. So I sat down, like watched the entire three hour podcast that we recorded, essentially a podcast. And then um, 
every time we mentioned something that was relevant, I would put a visual thing up so that you could follow along. That was kind of nice. Took a while to do that. <laughs> Took well more than three hours to do that, but it ended up being kind of nice. Um, it was like over a year ago, I think now. It was before WoW launched, I'm pretty sure. So um, I put that together and I enjoyed it. But well after that, like when the book was published, he sent me a copy for free, which I didn't expect. We never talked about that. So afterwards, he sent me a copy, um, which is why I have a copy. I was going to buy it anyway, but he sent me like the nice hardbound, like ba like Kickstarter backers edition or whatever. It was really cool. But it's a well put together book and it was a good story. I liked reading about it. So I'd recommend it if you're interested in WoW development or even just game development in general. I think there's aspects of that book that are applicable well beyond just WoW. Um, so I read that. I read Citizen and American Lyric by, oh, what's her name? I think Claudia something. I'm forgetting her last name. I think it's Claudia something. It's like, um, it was one of the books I'm reading rel like in relation to the Black Lives Matter movement and kind of just wanting to learn a little bit more about um, kind of inequality in the United States. And it was, it's kind of a, sh I've talked about this already a bit on the channel, but it's like a prose sort of poetry book. It's one of the most difficult books I've ever read. It's not that long, but one of the most difficult books, books I've ever read because it involves a lot of unique sentence structure where sometimes sentences are run on sentences they don't use any punctuation there's things that and so or like sort of like a train of thought prose and it becomes very complicated um so i need to reread it at some point because i read it and i was even going back to read rereading some of the passages in it as i was reading but it's definitely a difficult read for me it was very difficult um the content itself is also kind of hard to read in the sense that it's um elicits a bit of an emotional response because it's talking about inequality and how that has impacted a person from their point of view. Um, but even like the, the way it's written is also complex. So definitely a challenging read that I found kind of enjoyable in that sense. Um, I very rarely say that I'm challenged when I'm reading something, but that was one that I think was very much a challenge. And I'm currently reading A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. Am I totally mis I'm not, now I'm like, vaguely like why is it Stephen Hawking it should be Stephen Hawking right um let me check this out a brief history of time is Stephen Hawking yes okay somehow my brain was like that's not Stephen Hawking but it definitely was Stephen Hawking about a quarter of the way through that book um I've got like the illustrated version it's kind of cool like I really when I bought the book or I asked for it for Christmas like a year or two ago and um someone needed something to get me they didn't know what to get me. I was like, oh, you know what? I've wanted to read this book forever. And they actually happened to get me like an illustrated version, which is kind of cool. So it has like the same... Why can't I click that mound? You see this? Oh, I've got 12 of 12. I'm done. You can't loot anymore. Interesting. So if you have 12, they don't let you do this any further. Before we turn this quest in, I want to see how much these things a vendor for. I have this like vague idea that this is like a money-making quest where like if these things vendor for a lot, we could just um, we could just abandon the quest and retake it and just keep scooping up this easy loot. I doubt it's worth much, but it makes me worry that since it doesn't let you loot more of them, it makes me think, huh, why won't they let you loot more? I wonder if there's a reason. And now I, I want to go check with the vendor prices of these things before we uh, before we disable the quest, or before we turn the quest. We might... No, we should not ding on this quest. I don't think we're going to get more than a few thousand, ex maybe a couple thousand experience. And we need about six or seven thousand a level. We're getting there, but... Next, we'll probably work on a new cloak's sheen, as well as natural materials, basically. I'm still looking for that... Um, those trents, triants. So yeah, so I'm reading A Brief History of Time. I'm about a quarter of the way in. Really enjoyed it so far. It's also a difficult read because of some concepts in there that I have to kind of reread or think about or even like look up online to kind of fully wrap my head around. Oh, all on, almost, almost did what I didn't want to, I was just about to say I don't want to do. Where is a vendor? There's one in here I know for sure. I'm just curious what these things are worth. What brings you? 
Let's repair. Oh, these are like copper on the dollar. Okay. These are basically worthless. I like to keep obscure things like this and then gift them to guildies during raids. Like literally just like, oh hey, and just toss this to them. I always find it kind of silly and funny in some way. Also, I picked up a Waste Wander pouch on accident on my druid, which is why I think there's one in my bags here. I'm going to grab that. Um, pick that up. Okay, let's turn this quest in. Yeah, this, I was like thinking it wasn't worth much. I was like, just in case, let's check before we turn the quest. Um, so it's a cloak here with 10 spirit, which is probably slightly better than our healing cloak. It's one more spirit, but we lose four stamina. It's not that much better, but it's probably not worth it. I'm just going to vendor it. Um, like, would I give up one spirit for 40 health as a healer? Probably... But our heal set is in the bank, so I don't know if I care enough to go all the way to the bank just to swap that out. Like, it's not... If it's an upgrade at all, it's not much of one. 42 silver. I will take it. Um, okay, so let's go work on a new cloak's sheen. We might also do the mark of quality while we're over there. Um... Yeah, maybe I'm just thinking about this. Oh, the fairy dragons can drop the encrusted material minerals. Okay, so we're definitely gonna do this quest also. We need all the encrusted minerals we need. New cloak sheen, mark of quality yetis. I. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. Um. I think we have to go a little bit further to get to the sprite darters, or maybe they're... I forget, we ran into them. Okay, here they are, perfect. Alright. It shouldn't be too hard for us to kill, but they do kind of a weird little, like, um, blink vanish thing. If I remember right. Let's pull this guy over this way. And... Summon the battle chicken. There we go. Mana burn. Nope, we don't want that. I mean, honestly, if you're gonna get mana burned, it's cheaper just to earth shock for sure. Like, I'd rather earth shock a mob than get mana burned. Oh, resist. Probably has a high resist in nature, right? That makes sense. Um, but yeah, I don't wanna get mana burned. I'd rather just hopefully damage them and uh, earth shock them. Or just win free them in the face. Battle Chicken moved? I've never seen that before. So when does Battle Chicken run around? By the way, we did already get um, Encrusted Minerals, Sprite Darter Wings, so we're getting both the things we need, which is great. I, yeah, I usually don't remember Battle Chicken moving like that. I guess we can drop a totem. Probably reasonable. Seriously, I, I'm like really trying to think if I've ever seen Battle Chicken move out of a location. Oh, it's Squawk, by the way. We got our 5% attack speed bonus. Wonderful. I heard the Squawk, but I wasn't. it didn't like register in, in my brain. I love that. Squawk time, bro. Oh, hold on before I do this. Um, that's fine. We're gonna shrinky dink this guy. Nice, perfect. Oh man. When Wind Fury procs and you crit a bunch, it's so good. Alright, we're getting everything we need so far. This is pretty nice. Um, okay. I'll try to pull this back to us. Might be able to get it in range of. Oh, the chicken died. I really get in range at least the mana spring. Soak up some more mana is always nice. Um, rest in peace, chicken. It did its part. It's so lonely without the chicken here helping with snow. Like, it just. It's a bummer. Also, his mom was not. Do like, oh, resist. Mana burn, no. Bummer. Hey, I was worried about that. It's like, well, if it resists nature and I've got Earth Shock, I'm probably not going to land that all the time. It's. Oh, a star ruby. Those are fun. They sell for a little bit in the auction house. I've got like 20 of these already in the bank, so I'm definitely going to sell this one off. Uh, let's keep moving as fast as we can, since we are, we've got our 5% buff for another, 5% attack speed buff for a few minutes. Um, I'm going to try to avoid drinking for the next three minutes if I can, just keep pushing through mobs. All right, another wing. We're getting a lot of loot, uh, a lot of quest loot, which is great. Pretty good drop rate overall. Let's pull it back to our totemy friend. Okay, yeah, so I'm reading a brief history in time, and then I'm also reading um, 
and about a quarter of the way through, and then I'm rereading a book I read maybe five years ago. It's, it's actually was published, I think, in the 1930s, and it's called, oh, Resist. We lose 500 mana from that. Wow. And also take the 250 health, uh, 250 damage. That's real nasty. Yeah, I definitely don't want to uh, get mana burned. We'll kill this mob, and then we'll stop the drink. We killed all the ones around here anyway, I think, so I might have to wait for respawns or find something else to kill. Uh, I guess if I just burn all my mana, I can't, uh, can't burn what you don't got. We'll chuck an earth shock at it if it tries to mana burn us again. And then, uh, in fact, I'm just going to do that. Cause we're gonna, I was like, we're going to ding anyway. Oh, we got two d sprite darter wings off that mob. That was cool. I'm just gonna kill this naturalist that's behind us. Um, there is a quest for these mobs, but I think we're too high level for it. So the quest giver isn't showing it up. We could go find it probably, but you know we're we're leveling out of the zone pretty quickly. Um, we're already kind of high level for it. You know what's nice is that none of them turned gray, and also uh, sigil of trollbane is still green. I still want to go back and do that quest. It's been on my mind forever. All right, that's a nice time to. Ding, you know. Um, so we need three more encrusted, four more encrusted minerals, one more wing. Okay. Um, so the other book I'm reading, I forget the author's name, but it's from like 1937 or something. It's called um, How to Make Friends and Influence People. And I've read it before about five years ago. And if you've never heard of this book, it's pretty cheap. You can get like a paperback copy for under $10, brand new, I think, and you can get a um, used, I, I bought a used copy. I always buy used books if I buy books. If I don't go to the library and if I'm buying a book, I'll usually buy a used copy um, for, for the most part. Uh, so I went to eBay, bought it for like, I think like $6 or something. I found a copy, it was pretty nice. Um, not that expensive. So, um, how to Win Friends and Influence People. It sounds a little bit like a book like a sociopath would read. Small Flame Sacks, those are nice. I love collecting those. I forgot we already got one. Sweet. They're used in um, regular fire protection potions, and I think something else that I'm forgetting all of a sudden, but I um, I have a collection of about like 20 of them on my bank character that I keep around. Probably eventually just sell them. I don't know if I need them ever, but they're nice to have, I think. Um, I have a few on hand. So... The book is really about how to work with people. It's not literally influencing them to do things they don't want to do necessarily, um, but it's from the standpoint of friendships, relationships, um, business relationships, you know, coworkers, employees, bosses. It's kind of a guide on how to help understand people, how to treat them in a way that allows them to appreciate what you're saying and then maybe consider your opinion on what whatever you're talking about. Um, we're getting, I've got like two in a row on those encrusted minerals. It's pretty sweet. Uh, it's a really cool book and it's so applicable. Like you can apply it to any relationship you have just about. Uh, the first chapter is basically about the idea of critiquing people and kind of talks about shrink ray. Yeah, there we go. Talks about critiquing people and how to not um, be overly critical. And it gives some examples of this, like it goes back to like Abraham Lincoln and how he would critique or not critique people. Um, there's a lot of cool things in there that are just so applicable. And so I've been rereading it because I'm thinking in the event I get hired for this position, I'm still waiting to hear back from for this interview. And if I don't, it's fine. Um, life goes on and this book will still be useful. But in specific, it made me think, okay, if I'm gonna potentially be a professor and be in charge of students, like running my own lab. We're gonna die from this guy, aren't we? For sure. Uh. Hey there. Oh well, I did not die. Wonderful news. I was like, oh man, he's coming right for us. We're dead. I'm not gonna really kill a what looked like I didn't really get a good look at his gear, but it looked like he had some epic gear. But he's definitely level sixty, so. Um, yeah, so I was thinking, like, if I want to manage students, it'd be a good time now, like, before I'm in that, before I'm managing a student, before I have students in my lab, before I'm teaching classes, um, to start reviewing this material now, 
and get kind of refamiliarized with the book because I read it years ago and I loved it and it's been a while. So I'm rereading it. It's kind of a, it's basically a self-help book. Nice. We've got another Encrusted Mineral and the last one and another Small Flame Sack. So we still need, um, so we need the logs. The sinew comes from Hippogriffs of Feralis. Where are the Hippogriffs at? I feel like they're on this island over here to the west. Um, let's go... Let me double check that, but I'm pretty sure it's true. Let's go kill the yetis over to the west. We know we need them for sure. Oh, I just remember, I didn't pick up my talent yet. Um, we're gonna max out this. So now, next time, um, the next skill we're gonna take for sure is elemental focus, which is really an exciting. This is like the first time in probably 10 levels that I've been really excited about a talent point. So this will give us a 10% chance to enter a clear casting state after casting any fire, frost, or nature damage spell. So, um, lightning bolt, earth, shock, flame, shock, frost, shock. Um, all of those give us a 10% chance that the next spell we cast, next damage spell we cast, is reduced by 100%. So we we'll basically get a free shock, free shock every 10 spells. Um, that's probably what I'll end up using it on. Cause you know, if I attack a mob with a spell, I probably don't want to cast the lightning bolt as it's punching me in the face after that. They are for sure going to get that talent point. Besides that, reducing this cooldown of our shocks by a second in total might be nice reverberation. Um, increasing crit chance isn't bad either. So we've got 10 more talents. We can put you know, one here, five here, it's six, so four more. Elemental Devastation seems kind of nice. Um, Eye of the Storm. That might be nice. We could Lightning Bolt people. I don't know how much I'd do that. Because of the way I'm trying to regenerate my mana, I don't know if I want to keep casting as I'm being damaged in the fight. Improved fire totems, maybe. Probably do elemental devastation. Yeah, I don't know exactly. I kind of like reverberation being like a lower cooldown. Um, sort of like that. All right, I'm gonna look up the hippogriffs because what I need resilient sinew. Uh, but I know where the yetis are. Resilient sinew. Classic. I really type of that bad. It was like resilience, all one word. Resilient sinew. <laughs> the first hit is resilience in you, then resilience in you not dropping. That's amusing. But I think... Drop by Frey, Feather, Hippogriff, Stagwing. Okay, so... Where are these at? I think they're on the island. Like, I really think they're over there. Which is kind of annoying, so I don't necessarily want to go over there. But I will, because it's still faster than Hinterlands. Um, I'm looking this up on a wow head, by the way. Oh no, I'm wrong. Okay. So we're actually going exactly where we need to go. They're south of where we are now, basically. But truthfully, what I need is this thick yeti hide, which I think, let me double check this. Yeah, I think it just drops from any of these yetis, so. It shouldn't be overly difficult for us to do this. Let's go ahead and blast the yeti. Shrink ray worked, that's great. Yeah, these are all, like I said, kind of low-level mobs. They're a little out-leveled for the zone now, but I kind of... I, haven't, I didn't level here on my druid at all, so I was kind of excited to do some quests out here. And uh, a thick yeti hide. One for one. I'll take it. There should be a cave over here where, like, a lot of the yetis hang out at. Um, doesn't really matter what we... Oh, that, that's the cave right here. <laughs> it's like a giant beam of light. I think there's also an escort quest over here. It's one of the chicken escort quests. I think it starts in here. I am not doing this quest solo. If I was a warlock, I would. I would not do it as a shaman solo. It's just, even at this level, I think we're going to have a lot of trouble. Let's see if I can get this off my toolbar now. Uh, yeah, so How to Make Friends and Influence People is a really, really good book. Like I would strongly recommend it for anyone that deals with people professionally or in your private life, which is pretty much everyone. It's just a very good book. Um, so I'm rereading it right now. I'm only through the first chapter, but I'm working on it slowly. We got some mithril over here. Oh, iron. A little bit disappointing. It's okay. Um, 
Yeah, I've been, I've been on a kick of, of reading books. And then I, I what, what else I'm working on? So I'm going to read those two, two books. I usually read like one book at a time, maybe two. Kind of like just bat, bounce back and forth, forth, bounce back and forth, depending on how I'm feeling at that given day when I want to sit down and read. Um, I try to stagger what I'm reading, so it's not like the same topic. So, for example, I'm reading sort of a self-help book, this How to Win Friends book, but then I'm also reading A Brief History of Time, which is not a self-help book at all. It's more just an educational book. Um, there's some overlap, obviously, in that idea they're both educational, but... Um, all right, another Yeti hide. That thick, thick Yeti hide, I should say. Let's go ahead and get this iron. We're literally right on top of it. Normally wouldn't care, but since we're here, why not? Uh, then I I bought a book recently. I actually bought like a new copy of a book because I couldn't find a good used one that I wanted. Um, I wanted a hardbound copy of this, so I bought Dune, the original Dune science fiction book. I think it was first published in like the 70s or early 80s. It's... So the Dune series is a highly regarded science fiction series, and I've never read any of the Dune books. I've never seen the movies, I've never played, I think there's video games, I've never done anything with Dune, the IP at all. I have no first-hand experience with it. We crushed that Yeti, by the way. And we took his thick hide. I like it. I'm just gonna frost shock this guy, or flame shock him. So... It kind of, yeah, so I had this, like, urge to read Dune. Um, I read a quote from... It was, like, a comment on social media about... Uh, it was about people getting sent back, like, states in the U.S. opening up for, like, opening up the economy despite concerns about the coronavirus. And then there's, like, reports coming out that some of these locations that have reopened are now having significant COVID-19 outbreaks, which is kind of, like, duh, like, Duh, like nothing really changed. We just decided to go back to work. Um, actually, that's not true. People say nothing changed, but some things did change. Some people are social distancing still, even in those places that opened. Some people are wearing masks. Some people are washing their hands more. Some people are, avoid are working from home now. So some things have changed. And if you are me, if you're in an area where they've opened up completely, I would strongly recommend that you wear a mask when you can. Wash your hands, you know, reasonably often. Uh, distance as much as you reasonably can and work from home when you can you know that's still the pandemic is still ongoing in my mind and I think those things are not overly difficult actions to take in some cases depending on what, where you're working what you're doing I'm not saying you can't go out and spend money on stuff at restaurants or stores but if you're gonna do that at least be conscious about the idea of trying to distance within the capacity of where you're at um, but yes it's been this you know upticks in caseloads in some places, including hospitalizations. And so, um, there's a comment on social media that was like, something like, the spice must flow. And I was like, what is that from? It's kind of familiar to me. It was, it was sort of a way of saying, despite everything going on, you know, money's gotta be made. Doesn't matter the cost of human capital or whatever. Um, so I Googled a quote and it came up to Dune and I was like, oh man, I gotta read Dune. Like, how am I gonna not read this book? After all, I've heard about it for years and not read it. So I uh, bought a copy of Dune. I forgot how big the book is. Like I knew it was a large book because my dad has a copy of it. Um, I got one, it's not in room I'd show you. It's kind of cool. It's got like this like like bright blue border to the pages. Like a nice hardback book, looks really it's really vibrant color. Um, by the way, we're 6 of 10 on thick Yeti hides. And we're still working our way through them. 15 minutes on our chicken. Oh, nice. It's the best buff is getting ourselves the uh, increased size and power. That's the way to do it. I should have frost shock, not flame shocked. I'm going to lose that dot damage. Yeah. Whoops. Another Yeti hide. Cool. The grow buff is so good. I love that so much. I've talked about this before. It's better than the shrink because it carries over to the next mob for a little bit. It's not very long. With 30 seconds, it doesn't last very long, but I'll take it. My DPS is 106 right now, 100.6, and it goes down to 80.9. So that's like a 25% DPS upgrade. It's significant for sure. Um, kill that bad boy. Okay, are there any quests in here? I don't think there's any mobs. Oh, let's kill this guy. I don't think there's any mobs that drop a quest or anything in here. Um, I'm going to pull this back since we're about to 
engage with this other yeti over here. See that? Uh, so about Dune. My understanding is about six to seven hundred pages, but it's split into kind of three big chapters that are essentially you can consider them three separate books in a sense. This is the original Dune, as I mentioned, not the uh, the series, but this is the first book in the series. I don't know if I'm going to read the rest of them. I think it's just a lot of reading to go through. There's like 15 books, and I don't really expect to read through them all. If I love this one, I may continue to the next couple of them, but right now I'm expecting to read this one eventually. So my plan of attack is to finish A Brief History of Time probably first, then continue reading how to win friends, how to make friends. Is it win friends? Maybe win, but how to make friends and influence people while I'm reading Dune. That's probably the order of operations there. Um, that means my bandages and wilds do that. Eleven hundred health, pretty sweet. Okay. Uh, so we're we got seven of ten. We should be able to finish this quest pretty easily. I don't know if we will. We're definitely not finishing natural materials today, but I'm hoping to get thick yeti hide done at least and move out of the yeti cave. Um, I'm gonna probably run out from here. Uh, let's kill. Let's get one more. Kill one or two more mobs. We should be closing in on the respawns at the entrance, so I'm kind of thinking it might be fun to. Uh, it might be smart to 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 back out and not have to fight a bunch of respawns on the way out that we don't need if we already have all our yetis, if we farm all the yeti hides in here. So I think we're going to start moving back with this guy. Hulking Feral Scar, what a name. That's like a band name, like a metal band or something, the Hulking Feral Scar, yeah, for sure. This guy's actually taking a lot of while to kill too, there we go. Maybe I was backing up and like moving out of range of melee a bit. Ah, huh, no respawns yet. I'm a little surprised. Okay. Toss. Oh, there we go. Okay, there we are getting respawns. Instead of sort of expecting, we'd be getting respawns any minute now. Um, all right, let's pull this guy. <sighs> yeah. So they're, they're doing some reading. Um, otherwise, I'm back in my lab now. I, I really missed being in lab, so I'm in there and just just like just blowing through experiments right now. Um, I have so many experiments to run and to catch up on and so many ideas we thought of while we were in quarantine that it's just like, yep, it's time to uh, time to run these experiments, so we're making it happen now. <laughs> okay. I missed that AI buff we had there. It's already gone and powered for it, but the, the AI buff special is super nice. So let's just kill these guys on the way out, and then we'll kill the ones outside. If we need more, we'll come back in, I guess, but... I'm hoping, the drop rate has been pretty good, so I'm hoping we'll get this done shortly. Um, metallic fragments, am I dumb? I am dumb, aren't I? No. How do we get the metallic fragments? Any of these guys can drop it. Okay. But I don't think we got any from the sprite darters. Like at all. Right? So maybe the sprite darters can't drop them. I'm not sure. I'll look that up later if we don't get any from any of the other mobs. Oh, there's the distress beacon. Do we want to do this? Let's add begins a quest. Alright, let me see this. It's a green quest. We can try. I think he's in here. Might be fun. Probably horrible, but it might be fun. Um, let's start with this. I didn't even see that guy down there. I like walked right over him. Totally missed him. I have a very high feeling that we're gonna fail this quest, by the way. All right, turn in the quest. Hey, we got 4,000 experience for turning in the quest. Oh, that's cool. Um, I'm gonna drink. Before we get out in this world, do this quest. I'm not optimistic about this, but let's have some fun. Sure, we got some mana to spend a little bit. I want to do this. Alright, let's finish this guy off. 
Nice, we like crushed him just as he was about to enrage. So the trick to this quest is as soon as we walk out of this cave, we get a little bit out of here, there's gonna be like three mobs that are gonna spawn um, in, a, in a group. And we're gonna have to fight all of them. Probably Stone Claw Totem, try and pull them off us briefly. And then um, probably Bandage actually too. I love that the chicken can daze mobs, by the way. Like, check this out. This guy's dazed. Oh, he was dazed. But I love that we can daze mobs. But we're gonna have a heck of a time with these. We'll probably do Iron Grenade, try and stop some of that damage from coming in. Stone Claw Totem. Um, oh, I probably want, after that, um, Stone Skin Totem. Okay. Stone skin is what I'm gonna want, right? Let's do this. I want to reduce my damage that I take a little bit. Seems likely. Let homing chicken tank that other mob for a moment. That's great. I guess that's the dream, right? You want homing chicken to tank some of the damage. He's because he'll heal in between combats, I think. Um, I've got my. I wish I had my chicken up. That'd be really nice. As soon as mob dies, I'm just gonna give myself a heal. Chicken does not wait for anyone. Seriously. Chicken doesn't care. Do I have potions at all? Do I? Oh, I do. Yeah, of course. It's like, I swear I should have some potions. They're on my hotbar too, so I'm just being dumb. I'm going to pull this mob. Because I think chicken is going to aggro mobs just up here. So I'm going to kill this mob. Rebuff. And then drink. I just want to be at as much health as I can be at. And then drink as much as I can. Because I think it's like right here we pull these mobs. Here we go. The gang gang over there. Oh boy. My stone claw totem. Can we not pull the gorilla also, please? Thank you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gorilla pulled. Oh boy. There we go. I'm going to pull thread off this. Who's chicken attacking? Okay. This is a big heal. Thankfully, these mobs are actually pretty squishy. Like, I'm sitting there like, oh boy, here we go. Here we go. You're welcome, chicken. I saved you and your robotic butt. We have another fight like this coming up that we're going to have to deal with. Like, another pool of like three mobs. It'd be great if they could drop the things I need. Oh, I got all the thick yeti hides I need. Okay, good. Chicken, you're so fast. Seriously, this dude does not stop for anything. I barely can, like, heal up without risking going out of range of him. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> gotta move, gotta move. Chicken on the loose. So that was the tough part. That was probably the toughest part. There's one more fight up ahead where we're gonna deal with something similar, but I didn't even stone skin totem. I didn't really even use my my totems there, to be honest, as the um, uh, stone claw, which is pretty nice. But I think we're in good shape at this point. I'm gonna drink just to... Top off our mana. There we go. Might as well rebuff too. So the escort actually goes up pretty far. Uh, a part of the risk of this quest is just running into someone that kills us, like an alliance. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, while we're running over here, I just wanted to thank all my Patreon supporters. I always appreciate the support, and uh, I always get to name Adam H, Luke D, and Chris S specifically. So thank you guys for your. Uh, Support at the top level of my three tiers. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. And uh, <laughs> the Patreon support goes towards me escorting homing robot 00, or is it 00? 00x 22 slash forward slash fe. Uh, without you, this chicken would never be get escorted. So look at that. You all saved the chicken. Hopefully. We'll see if we make it. Uh, when, when I saw this quest was green, I was like, okay, we can, we might be able to do this. 
we actually go all the way up here in this dock. You can see, oh, oh is he, why'd he stop? Okay. Um, there's a little dock sticking out here. That's actually pretty much where we go. So we follow the main path, and I think it's just before we get off the path up here. Oh, forgotten coast discovered. Just before we get off this path. Oh, nope, this is where we fight the mobs. Okay, that's cool. Um, who do I, I'm gonna let chicken to pull aggro. Okay, then I'll take one of them. I'll stone claw to buy some time. Well, uh, yeah, it's perfect. So the stone claw is nice because it buys some time where um, chicken isn't taking damage that way. And chicken should be fine at this point. And I should be fine, for that matter. I'm gonna finish this guy off, and then we'll uh, punch this thing in the face. See, I was gonna say, where's a flurry proc or a wind fury? That'd be nice, there we go. Actually, the chicken took this guy down like 40% on his own. I'll resist, that's bad. And a pull threat, just in case chicken keeps taking damage. Oh, never mind, we're good. Alright, let's loot him up. Some vendor trash. Bunch of vendor trash, it's fine. Um, I'm gonna get a little bit ahead of chicken here. He's almost fully healed. They regenerate pretty fast out of combat. Oh, there he is, okay. And I guess I don't really need to bandage much. I probably should drink a little bit. How much does this give us? 97 mana per second. That's a lot for us. It's really nice getting this water. I'm glad I bought some of the Mor Morning Glory Dew. It's super handy. <laughs> I think that's the last of the mob that spawn on us. I think at this point, it's just a matter of not engaging any big alliance that would kill us. And I was all top off my buffs. Uh, homing chicken's almost up. Our gnomish battle chicken's almost up. I think we had one of these quests in Teneris too that I skipped because it was we were kind of lower level for it. Oh, Spatial Anomaly. What is this? What's happening? Oh, wow. Another one. We're gonna kill this guy as fast as we can. Let's Stone Claw Totem after that. I think I pulled aggro off most of these. With the grenade, which is fine. Um, let's finish that up. Stunkla Totem took a lot of a beating there, which is nice. Stunkla Totem is really handy for this type of fight. That means it's really, really useful. Uh, I guess I can drop a stone skin too. But yeah, it's super useful. I think these guys cleave. I'll try and face them away. There we go. Not bad. I didn't realize there's a third pack of mobs. I think that's it. I, I mean, this is the, the X. It's right there. Little spinny mabob. That's where we're going. We just gotta, um,. Make it the last little bit, and I think we're good. I think usually there's not any alliance over here either. Like, we're off the main path now a bit, so we should be okay. Um, what is the reward for this? I saw it was something like a 10 strength, 10 agility shoulder. That's a pretty nice DPS shoulder, honestly. It's much higher DPS than our current one, but it's a lot less tankiness, so I don't know if I'll switch into it or not. That's a much better chain link towel. Now even less absorbent. <laughs> That's a much better healer cloak than our current one, so we'll definitely get that, I think. Who do we turn this into? Oglethorpe, Obnoticus, and Booty Bay. <laughs> okay. Mm, interesting. Well, um, this is really overlapping quite heavily with our quest up here. Zapped Giants. This is a fun quest. Um, Glad I could help. Quest log's full. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. Um... Time is money. Fuel for the zapping. <sighs> okay, what can we drop? You know what we can drop? We can drop these Hinterlands quests. Because they are literally in the zone there. Like, in the town there. So we can easily Good. grab yeah, them um, next time we go back to Hinterlands. Like, they're right there. Okay, we're going to stop here for today. At this point, we'll probably do these quests since we're here next episode. And then... We need to go back and turn in some of these quests, um, and we need to finish natural materials. So we've got at least three quests we're going to work on here. A good chunk of quests. Um, these are actually yellow quests to us, they're a little bit higher level. Nothing great reward-wise, probably, but... Okay, so yeah, we'll definitely, I'm just going to log out here, we've got plenty of rested experience. I've got a level and a half, probably, of, level, of rested experience to the boat, so... So we're going to log out here. We're going to do these quests next episode, these two on the shoreline here finish natural materials, and then turn in everything. And then um, 
After that, if we still have time, we'll go to Ratchet. We have a quest there to pick up something, then go to Tenaris, turn that in, go to Booty Bay. We just got a lot of running around to do after we do the five or so quests here. So, should be a good time. Should be a good time. Anyway, that is all for today. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.